Hi, my name is Ricky Shannon, application engineer with Trimex 3D Printing Team. And in this video tech tip, I want to quickly show you different ways of applying multiple materials within a single build in GrabCAD Print. So to get things started before we jump in and start applying materials, I just want to quickly show you what the model is that we're working from here. I'm in SolidWorks and I took one of Stratasys's demo models and added a few extra features to it here. Uh, added some logos and also added some additional text onto the side of the part. Notice also we've got a lot of grayscale uh, to this. So we'll go ahead and hop over to GrabCAD Print and see what happens when we bring this in. Now that we're over in GrabCAD Print, I've set a tray up here for the Stratasys J55 Prime, which is actually a full color or really a five material machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we're set up with the proper materials that we want here. In which case we've got this camera lens, so we know we're gonna want some clear. So I'm actually gonna remove this Vero Black and I'm gonna add Ultra Clear S to the mix. So we have clear, cyan, magenta, white, and yellow, which will give us everything we need for a full color plus clear part. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our model, in which case I'm gonna bring in that actual SolidWorks file that we were just working from. Note that I'm actually gonna bring in an entire assembly at one time. Now the part is loaded on the tray. We can actually see that all the information we had in SolidWorks carried through. So we have all that grayscale information that we had put in our part by applying uh, colors to various bodies and even where we colored by faces here by adding this text which was applied in SolidWorks using the split line command tool even along the front here where we have the lens cap with the logo on it. One thing though that we need to do here that didn't carry over is the clear lenses. So we can simply click on a lens and we can go up to our model materials and we have two different ways of doing this. We have a slider actually that allows us to control transparency. So we could actually pull this all the way over and we could see that it becomes transparent. Another option we have is to go not to the color picker, which is our default setting when we have a full color set up in a machine, but we can go to our tray materials in which we can actually select and apply pure materials, basically straight out of the cartridge with no blending, in which case we could choose the ultra clear S Another thing that makes it handy for applying uh, properties to parts is to actually disassemble our assemblies. So I could simply go to the left and go and hit disassemble. And it'll break the part out on the tray, which allows me more easily to choose internal components, which I'll select the interior lens. And again, I'll go to my tray materials and choose that pure version of that ultra clear S. I can also change other things within my model. I could click on a part, and again, I could use my transparency slider if I desire to be able to get a, a transparency, in which case it would keep the original color and try to make it more and more transparent. I could also go and even apply uh, new colors entirely to parts. So I could make this red if I wanted. I could also alter the transparency if I desired. And I could print this part either broken out on the tray and its pieces in which case I can go to a range tray and it will actually optimize the orientation for all the parts for me. So now that we've seen how to work with color and being able to adjust color some, let's actually see what would happen if we were to change the multi-material setup on the J55 Prime to being more focused around altering material properties, not just uh, colors and transparencies. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a new project. I then want to change the loadout on our machine. So I'm going to go to my trade settings. I'll hit change. I'm going to go ahead and start loading materials in here. So I want a black rubberized. I'll add a clear rubberized. I'll add our clear material. And then I'm going to add an opaque black and a opaque white. Hit save. And now I'm going to go ahead and add that assembly again. So just like before, we actually see our part came in and it's intended uh, grayscale with all the logoing and text that are on it. However, again, we'll have to adjust uh, the transparency for the lenses. Again, the easiest way to do this is to disassemble the model and then select the parts we want to change, in which case I'm going to hit shift and select both of the lenses. I can go to my model settings, which again, I could alter it using the transparency slider, or I could actually go to tray 
materials and choose that clear material. Now we have a more engineering focused loadout on this machine, which allows us to have more options of what we want to do as far as the properties of the materials. So for instance, maybe this focus ring here should actually be soft and rubberized. So it's easy to apply a rubberized feature here. I can just select that part. I can go to my model settings and I actually have the ability to change the shore value simply by moving a slider. In this case, it's going to blend with it a clear rubberized material. Now, if I wanted it to stay black and still end up having different shore values, I can do this another way. I can go and create what is called a digital material. A digital material is just our ability to designate specific materials loaded in the machine and have specific blends that can happen between those. So I'm going to select the materials I want to blend, which is going to be our black rubberized and our black rigid material in which case I get a range of materials to work from here, starting at a shore 50, then moves through all the way to a shore 95, and then we have two additional blends, which end up being uh, more rigid, and the ultimate one at the end ends up being uh, polypropylene-like, which has more flexibility, good for snap fits. So in this case, let's just go ahead and give this a shore 70. It's important to note though when we see these kind of grayscales show up here this is more to denote that there's a difference in material properties not difference in color this is a black rubberized material and a black rigid material the resulting material will in fact be black so let's go ahead and add some of that polypropylene high impact like properties as well to a piece on here so this is sort of this internal circular spring uh, clamping feature that goes inside of the lens cap this needs to flex when these tabs are pushed in so what we'll want to do here is actually go back to our digital materials. I'm going to choose a rigid white and then I'm going to mix that with the black rubberized. And I'm going to choose that polypropylene like blend. And in this case, because we're mixing a white with a black, we have very little uh, rubberized black going into a lot of rigid white to make this blend. This will in fact be a more gray uh, part here. So we can apply that. You know, if at any time we desire to change properties on these because we have black and white loaded, we can always alter our grayscale at any given time. We have clear loaded, so again, we can easily adjust our, our clear if we want. And we could even apply different shore values just simply using sliders as well. Now, we could go again and we could either uh, arrange this tray with it broken apart, or we could even go and maybe assemble specific sub-assemblies within the model depending on how we intended this part to be assembled afterwards in which we could go ahead and pre-assemble some of the model and then arrange the tray for the rest of the models to be laid out and just like that we've got a part with uh, rubberized portions higher impact plastics and transparencies all within a model easily laid out on the tray and ready to send the printer Hope you found this video useful and unlock some of the mystery behind how you assign multiple materials to a single build using GrabCAD Print. If you have more questions, please feel free to reach out to Trimex 3D Printing Application Engineering Team.